Hi, welcome back. I'm actually recording on a Monday. Figured I might as well try to give myself more time to edit. It was a little rough trying to get that out Wednesday night. Not that I'm gonna give myself any time to edit it tonight because Janice and I have decided that we're gonna try another trivia night, see how it goes. I'm going to a place called the Mellow Mushroom, which is a pizza place. And I am super excited because hello pizza. <laughs> Also, I am excited just to see if we do well at this trivia night. Maybe we've learned something. Maybe we'll be worse. Who knows? If you want to be a part of our team, come on down. I'm still pretty excited. Went and saw the new Avengers movie. We'll just end it there. So, last week was a little rough. Um, I've started doing something new for the Chick-fil-A I work at, where I do the schedule for everybody. And we have like between 70 and 80 employees at our location. I don't remember how many it is. Uh, it fluctuates on a week to week basis, which makes it real fun. I enjoy doing the schedule. I like solving things. It's like a moving puzzle that kind of like a Rubik's Cube where you have to like slide in different pieces and then when it gets all going, it like starts just kind of trucking along. Only problem is I'm doing the schedule to try to get our labor down as a store, which means I'm trying to put together a puzzle that I don't know where the edge of the puzzle are. It's getting a little frustrating because I don't know about you, but I hate feeling like I don't do things right, which means I hate feeling like I keep messing up the schedule. I think it's a little bit better, but I also think that I am my father's daughter and a little bit more driven by results than just continually working to do something good. Like I need results to show me that I have done the thing. But it's okay because it's not just work that I feel frustrated and like I'm not getting anything done because let me tell you about the adventure I have had in trying to change my address to live in Nashville. So I'm trying to get new plates for my car and in order to get new plates you have to change your address where you live and you also have to get an emissions test for your car if you're in the county and pass the emissions test. So Thursday I was off work. I decided I would go get my emissions test done early in the morning and then go from the emissions test to the license bureau. Went to get my car emissions tested. Didn't pass. They said that I needed to go and get a new gas cap and then like reset my fuse box or something and then come in to get it tested. And I wouldn't have to pay the second time. I could just bring in the copy of the first because it's $10 to do an emissions test. So I wouldn't have to pay the $10 again to take the test a second time. I could just bring in the copy and the receipt from the other emissions test. Okay, good. So then I went from there to the license bureau, only it was hard to find where it was because when you're in a state capital and you're looking for like the Department of Motor Vehicles, there are departments of motor vehicles for the state that's not like a bureau that you just stand in line to do stuff. And they have like a Department of Motor Vehicles and they have a Department of Vehicular Conduct and all these other departments that it kind of sound like it. The Google Maps is like, oh, this is the thing you want. No, it's not the thing I want. Thank you. I want the thing that people hate. That's, that's the thing I want and this is not helping. So I found the thing that people hate. The right, like the DMV. Opened at 7.30. I got there at 7.45 and there was a line outside the door and it was still closed. So waited in line, got inside, spent about an hour. So I finally walked up to the lady at pretty much nine o'clock and I had brought information that online had told me was good. I had brought proof of residency, my renter's insurance form, copy of my renter's agreement, and my social security card, which online it had told me all of those work. I get there, she tells me social security card is no longer accepted and that I need a signed renter's agreement and not just a copy. So now I still have to grab two forms of proof of residence and then a passport or a birth certificate, both of which I have, and then I can change my license in my official government recognized address. And then I need to change my car plates, which costs like $85 on top of this emissions test. It's a whole thing, which still isn't done and probably should be, which is great because then every time I talk to mom on the weekends, she's like, so did you get your address changed? Did you get your new license plates yet? No, I have not. Which then really makes you feel like you're adulting well. Add to that the frustration of not doing well and stuff at work, and you really just feel stellar. Probably would be so bad if I wasn't so tired. Like, I'm just this constant state of sleepy. And I, like, I get part of that's like being an adult, but also part of that's because like last week I worked a 63 hour week. I have no spare time. I know like I'll start chopping down on the weeks as I get more used to doing the schedule. It's just a lot. I may have bitten off more than I can chew when I have a big mouth. So I thought maybe I could just be able to chew it. It's been weird. Tuesday night church Kairos and Sunday, Sunday morning church at my church at Avenue South. Uh, the sermon 
instruments have kind of been lining up and been like echoing each other, which, you know, with the god that has crafted the universe and everything by hand, there's no such thing as a coincidence. I'm assuming that this is lessons that I need to learn right now. Both of the sermons have been about worth, which is like the thing that I struggle with the most, just like on a personal level, feeling like I have worth. I don't know. I'm just trying to pay more close attention to it. I actually, I spoke about it with this guy, this, this stranger friend dude thing, question mark. I don't know. Uh, so Sunday I was in church and I tend to not eat breakfast before church because I like to fast during the service. Just that way I can kind of be reminded what I really hunger for. And then at lunch, I normally eat. I was singing in church, just kind of worshiping with the congregation, and I noticed that someone's standing at the side of our row, so I kind of turned to look, and there's a guy sitting on the very end, three or four seats in between us. He just kind of turns and smiles at me, but I was looking at the lady behind him, and then she kind of taps on the shoulder, and he's like, oh, and turns, and then like lets them through. But then I realized this guy had just been standing there smiling at me, and I was just watching the other people try to come in and sit, which I really wasn't totally conscious yet making connections sort of a deal, but I felt so guilty about it for the remainder of the church service. Okay, I have to chase this guy down at the end of the service and try to catch up to him and be like, hey, sorry, I really wasn't trying to ignore you. Thank you for smiling and being nice uh, and kind of explain myself sort of a deal. That was the plan. What happened is church got let out and then he must have wore his rocket socks because he was like out of there. And then the couple that sat in between us was like, doop, 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 doop. It took forever to get out of the row. So by the time, like, and I'm trying to like warm my way through the people and the crowd and everybody's trying to get out and I am not a small person and there is not really a whole lot of big areas for me to just slide on through kind of doing like the Disney thing where you turn sideways to get through the crowds of people and he goes just around the corner and so I'm trying to go and get him I follow him around the corner and then he goes into this doorway with this other guy that's in like the administrative offices <sighs> all right well I'm just gonna wait here for a little bit and I am gonna apologize and I am gonna be nice, and I am gonna thank him. And I stood there for a while, and then this other lady that was standing there, like it was Lana, she's like, well, hi there. How are you doing today? How was your week? How do you like the servant? And like started making small talk, which was okay. But I was just blatantly honest, was like, hi, I'm actually, uh, this is everything that just happened. And so now I'm awkwardly standing here to kind of apologize to this guy and thank him for smiling and trying to be friendly with me. And she was like, well, do it. Embrace the awkward, you've got this. And I was like, all right, yay. So I waited for him and then he eventually came out and I was like, hi, you tried to kind of smile and wave at me earlier and I was not receptive because I fast first church and therefore was not totally conscious. I apologize. Hello, my name is Larissa. And so I kind of introduced myself like that. He was black and kind of had like this funky accent. It kind of sounded like it was like a European version of English, definitely with an African accent on the British. Come to find out, he was born in Nigeria. Both of his parents are Pentecostal pastors and he moved by himself to England at the age of 14, which kind of put every comment that I made about feeling awkward about moving somewhere new and being alone and away from everybody. He's like, oh, I know exactly how that is. And then like proceeded to tell me that. And I'm like, well, you, I, I have no idea how that is. I thought I knew how I felt, but man, like that's literally a whole nother world. So it kind of puts some perspective on that buck up, Larissa, it's not that big of a deal. In talking about church services and liking the church or not, I actually found out that he attends Kairos on Tuesday nights too, as well as this church on Sundays. We, he was like, what did you think of the guest speaker last week at Kairos and the message? And so I told him, I'm like, you know, I actually, I, it's kind of the sermon that was here and I really struggle with worth in general. Like I feel like everybody has one word that is kind of whispered to them by either Satan or their subconscious that they constantly have to battle that feels like truth but isn't really true. And for me, that word is a waste, just like worthless. That's, that's my word. And so hearing all these sermons, like I'm, I'm trying to let it sink in, but it's really hard for me to not think of myself as just a statistic, you know, like Jesus came to earth for you. And like, anytime I start to feel that a little bit, like in the back of my mind's like, yeah, and everybody else, and there's nothing special about you. And he just kind of stood there and he goes, I'm not sure how you're going to take this, but that's not really a unique problem. I'm like, <laughs> this guy telling me like how I feel is not unique. Okay, you know what, that's fair. He just like spins out this whole logically bound argument about how we can't condemn ourselves and how we just need to just know that it's a fact and then just keep, and like totally just like, like all emotional and personal connection out of it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I was like, well, but try to kind of bring it back. And then every time, boop, like all the emotions gone. <laughs> And I'm like, but it's a relationship. It's based on emotion, connection, emotional connection between two people. That's what it's supposed to be. And I think that we like eventually reached a consensus. And then we just kind of started talking about something else, which was good. But like, there was something I said where it was like, you know what? I guess that I guess I'm just being selfish because I want to be something special to God and to Jesus. Like I want to be this special person that he chooses and loves immensely. Like special from everybody else. Like I want to be this flower in a sea of grass. And he just goes, but what is so wrong with grass? We need grass in order to be able to live. And I mean, yeah, you're right. Okay, what is so wrong with grass, I guess. <laughs> like there was no, I don't know. I just hope that I meet him again and uh, hopefully frustrate him as much as he frustrates me. Cause that's fair. <laughs> But no, he said at the end of it, I, at the end of it, I said, well, I mean, I'm glad I guess I got to talk to you because it seems like you just have all these answers ready to go. I really should try to seek you out more anytime I'm wondering about stuff. And he goes, oh no, I don't know answers. He goes, I just, I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you right now. You're not able to process things sometimes until you talk it over with some other person. And I was like, okay, you know, that's fair. But I'm the same way. Sometimes I really don't know what's gonna come out until my mouth opens. And sometimes I don't like what comes out. <laughs> But that's the struggle of not having a filter. Overall, it was pretty cool. And then he's like, well, what else are you doing today? I'm like, well, I was gonna go find food. Do you know any good places nearby? And he's like, I do not. I just kind of moved here recently. He goes, but I do need to get going my, and then he paused, my soccer team plays in 15 minutes. And I was like, ah, football. And he goes, well, I didn't know with you being American. I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I like, I have, I have Mexican aunts, aunts and uncles and it's definitely football. And he goes, oh yeah, football. Okay. So that was cool. So I don't know, maybe I'll see him Tuesday. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll have to think of some other argument where he can just like all of the trouble that I'm having. <laughs> maybe I should talk to him about work and see what he could be like, you know, what would really benefit the entire, and just like fix everything just through talking. You know, the one other thing that's been kind of weird down here. So I talked to mom and dad for two hours on the phone. And then mom mentioned how people from back home are going on a mission trip to Ethiopia, which I remember them talking about before I came down here. And I was like, oh yeah, Ethiopia. And like Kayla's going to Ethiopia. And I actually went to Canada with Kayla two years ago. Loved it. Like we had fun together on this mission trip. And then she was talking about how Joe and Ron from church are going back up to Canada to Camp of the Woods. And I had gone with them to Canada at the time before. And normally every time I hear about people church going on missions trips, like I get jealous and like, I want to go and travel and see the world and serve Jesus and do things. And I mean, this time it really didn't happen all that much. Normally like it happens to the point of hurting. And this time I'm just like, oh. And I mean, maybe that's just because I'm so tired, but I feel like maybe that's also because like I'm having my adventure right now and I'm like, no, I'm good on adventure. Thanks. No more. <laughs> Can we just pause on the adventure? And I've even like, there's an option down here with the Brentwood Baptist. I could sign up to go on a missions trip with them. Somebody in um, my life group, it's like a Sunday school class that meets not during Sunday school morning. Someone from my life group went to Honduras and like she was telling us all about uh, learning about how to use the toilet and how you don't flush toilet paper, you have to stick it in a bucket and all this fun stuff. And normally I'd be like, yeah, let's do it, let's go. And now I'm just like, huh. Not that like I don't want to travel or see the world and not that I don't want to serve. I'm just, I get tired even thinking about it. But anyway, I uh, need to go shower and change into cute clothes to wear to a pizzeria and hopefully kick some butt at trivia with Janissa. I am expecting great things. Uh, and hopefully this next week's schedule won't take as long. I will definitely keep you guys posted on <laughs> whether or not it gets better. I know it will. It just is so rough right now. As always, thank you for spending some time this week with me and have yourself a great rest of the week.